when I started my medical career, um, angioplasty didn't exist. And um, and then all this guy, this name called Grunzik, uh, put actually um, catheters into balloons to people. So initially, there were just like balloons without stenting. Um, he unfortunately passed away. We usually treated it for chronic stable disease, and that was a breakthrough therapy. And then people just thought, if I just fix the arteries or I repair the arteries, and life is good. We're going to actually, I'm going to tell the answer right now, is that having a balloon angioplasty for stable blocked arteries makes your chest pain better, but it doesn't prevent a heart attack or stroke or makes you live longer. I'm going to repeat that. Is If you're going for a stent for blocked arteries that's, that leads to chronic stable plaques, it will relieve chest pain, but it won't make you live longer. And in the past, people say I had this 90% blockage formation and the, either the surgeon or the angioplasty, I got you just in time. That's been changed. Now, if you're, I know the best time to have an angioplasty or a balloon to the heart or a stent to the heart is when you're having a heart attack. To me, the best situation, we're going over, falling over that cliff, but let's get away from the cliff. And that's basically preventing the disease from happening in the first place. So, We'll have three points today to look at. Is one is that you know the role of angioplasty for stable angina when you're having a heart attack or the plaque's unstable, and more importantly, let's prevent it or try to delay that from happening in the first place. So, take it away, guys and ladies. Let's hear what you have to say. While angioplasties are a procedure that has been around for a while, there are a number of medications that may allow you to avoid having one in the first place. Beta blockers are a prime example of such a situation. These are medications designed to lower blood pressure by blocking the effects of a hormone called epinephrine, or more commonly known as adrenaline. Ultimately, they cause the heart to beat slower and can help widen veins and arteries to restore blood flow. Some examples of beta blockers are bisoprolol, tenormin, and ace butylol. Calcium channel blockers also lower blood pressure. This is accomplished by preventing calcium from entering cardiac cells. Calcium plays a role in narrowing blood vessels by inducing stronger contractions. As a result, these channel blockers allow for relaxation and opening of the vessels, slowing heart rate and alleviating blood pressure and even chest pain. Some examples include philodipine, nicardipine, and procardia. Lastly, statins are a specific type of medication focused on reducing cholesterol levels to ultimately lower the risk of stroke or heart attack. Large amounts of cholesterol in the blood can cause for the formations of plaques, causing the arteries to narrow. Statins function by blocking an enzyme the liver requires to produce cholesterol resulting in a more relaxed arterial wall. Some examples include Lipitor, Lesco, and Lavalo. Like most procedures, an angioplasty does come with some possible complications and risks that patients should be aware of. While many of these complications are rare, it's still a good idea to be informed and prepared if you are having an angioplasty. First, we have changes to the artery. Changes to the artery can occur during or after an angioplasty. This includes the re-narrowing or re-stenosis of the artery, or less commonly, rupturing or tearing of the artery. We also have blood clots. Blood clots are a rarer complication, but these can cause a heart attack or a stroke. Bleeding or bruising can happen at the site of catheter insertion, and an infection could also occur around the catheter. In terms of allergic reactions, the contrast agent used during an angioplasty could cause irritation or trigger an allergic reaction. There is also the risk of kidney injury. The risk of kidney injury is rare, but it's aggravated when kidney issues already exist in the patient. And lastly, we have an irregular heartbeat. An irregular heartbeat can occur during an angioplasty. This includes the heart beating irregularly, too fast, or too slow. On the left, we have an image of a narrowed artery prior to angioplasty, and on the right is that same artery that has been successfully opened from the procedure. Even after an angioplasty, in some cases, the artery can re-narrow and revert back to what we see on the left. So, after hearing all that, you might be wondering, what's best for me, medications or an angioplasty? That's an entirely fair question, and it's one the cardiology community has been discussing for decades. There's sort of two minds about it. The first is that you take a conservative approach, like medications or lifestyle changes, and the second is taking an invasive approach, like surgeries, including angioplasty. There's two factors that you and your care providers might consider when deciding what the best route of action for you is. The first is your preference. So questions like, are you comfortable with invasive procedures? If you choose to make medication and lifestyle changes, are there ways that we can help you adhere to those and feel confident sticking with them? There's also candidacy stats. So questions like, have we exhausted alternative non-invasive options? 
Are you stable enough to undergo surgery should you need it? And of course, what it all comes down to, what does the science say? So in a study by the Harvard Medical School that they published in a paper, also led by the NYU Grossman School of Medicine and Stanford University, called the ischemia trial. Ischemia just means that not enough oxygen is getting to your heart muscle, but the study suggests that for the most part, managing CAD with medications alone, which is considered the conservative approach, is as safe and effective as the more invasive strategy of undergoing some sort of surgery. In the case of the study, it was cardiac catheterization and opening of the blocked artery. Ischemia followed over 5,000 patients with significant narrowing in one or more coronary arteries, and the findings were very surprising for a lot of people. Many cardiologists would have predicted that the invasive strategy might be superior to the conservative The group that did undergo surgery reported greater relief of angina or chest pain, but there was no significant difference between the two groups in terms of rates of heart attack, death, or hospitalization for worsening heart some people also argue that the conservative approach is better because it addresses all arteries in the heart, not just the small section that's affected by narrowing, um, and that may also be considered a risk. So there's a number of different thoughts about it. Ischemia is also not the first study to demonstrate that the conservative approach is safe and effective, but it is the most influential just because of its careful design, large number of patients, and the comparison of current medical treatment. So how do you best manage someone who has some sort of heart condition that's affecting them to the point where they might want to undergo angio. A safe and effective long-term strategy for most is to start with medications and healthy lifestyle first. And then for those who continue to be limited by angina, an invasive procedure is appropriate for symptom control, but that doesn't mean that it might prevent those scarier things that we might think about, like heart attack or death, if we're not addressing the underlying issues. So just to conclude for today's video, Angioplasty is a procedure to restore blood flow to your clogged arteries. It happens by inserting a catheter in those clogged arteries, expanding the narrowed artery with a balloon, and leaving a stent there permanently to keep that blood vessel open. It's important to restore blood flow to your coronary arteries, for example, to prevent heart attacks and other related conditions. Angioplasty is very effective, but it is a complicated procedure which does have side effects, which include potential renarrowing, blood clots, bleedings, infections, etc. For decades, cardiologists have debated whether it is better to treat with just medications or to stent and PCI. And the recent ischemia trial has shown that because there's no significant differences between the approaches, it is more preferred by many cardiologists to start with medication and lifestyle changes. But also make sure to keep in mind your patient preferences. We hope this video informs your health-related decisions, and thank you so much for listening. Have a great day.